Well, again, this is the last lesson in class two, lesson 2.6, and we're going to get back to some actual document classification here. In fact, we're going to introduce a new classifier, multinomial naive Bayes, designed for document classification. So I'd like you to recall the naive Bayes classifier. Uh, we talk about the probability of the event H, that is, the probability of a particular class, given evidence E, that is, a particular set of attribute values for an instance. And Naive Bayes updates the prior probability of H without knowing anything about the instance. So in the weather data, I think there are nine play instances and five don't play instances. So the prior probability of play is 9 over 14 without knowing anything about the instance. Naive Bayes updates that with uh, information about the instance, that is the attribute values, to get the probability of H of the class given the instance. And the naive, naive part is that it takes this, these attribute values, this evidence, and splits it into independent parts, one for each attribute, and multiplies these together which is a good thing to do if the attributes really are independent. So E1 is like the first attribute value, and E2 is like the second attribute value, and so on. So that's how Naive Bayes works. And there's a couple of problems here for document classification. First of all, the non-appearance of a word counts just as much in Naive Bayes as the appearance of a word, and it makes intuitive sense that the class of a document is more determined by the words that are in it than the words that aren't in it. Secondly, naive phase doesn't account for the fact that a word might occur multiple times in a document. A word that occurs lots probably should have a greater influence on the class of the document than a word that only appears once. And thirdly, it treats all words the same. So, you know, the word and or the is treated the same as an unusual word like weka or breakfast. And uh, that doesn't sound uh, reasonable either. So, multi -na multinomial naive phase is a uh, enhancement of naive Bayes that solves these problems. We take that uh, formula, you probably don't want to know this, but we take that complicated formula and replace it by the thing at the bottom. Just forget about those exclamation marks for the moment. This is basically a product over all the words in the document of pi, that is the probability of word i, to the power ni, that is the number of times that word appears in the document. So it's like treating each word appearance as an independent event and multiplying them all together. And those n factorials are just uh, a technicality that account for the possibility of different word orderings. Anyway, that's the theory. You don't have to understand that. It's very easy to use multinomial naive phase in Weka. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to open a training set. Uh, we're going to use the Reuters grain, which is like the corn data set we used uh, previously, only uh, the it's about documents that are about about grain. I'm going to open that, the training file, and uh, then I'm going to uh, use a supplied test set, that is the corresponding test file, and uh, then I'm going to use uh, J48. When I try and choose J48, well, it's grayed out, and we know why it's grayed out. It's grayed out because the training file contains a string attribute, and J48 can't deal with string attributes. And we know that what we're supposed to do here is to use the filtered classifier, which is here, and configure that to have J48 as the classifier, which is the default, and for the filter, we're going to choose the unsupervised attribute filter called string to word vector. There it is. Let me just run that. Okay, here I get 96% accuracy. But if I look at the accuracy on the minority class, the one that we're most interested in, the grain class, I guess, the accuracy is not very good. I get 38 correct out of a total of 57, 19 plus 38. So that's not very good accuracy at all. And of course, we know now I should be looking at the ROC area, which is 0.906. OK, so going back to the slide, I've kind of summarized that information. Uh, I could run Naive Bayes. And I won't do that, but let me just tell you that I would then get quite a bit worse classification accuracy, and, uh, but a, a better um, uh, error rate, a success rate on the corn related documents, 46 over 57, and a slightly worse ROC area. 
I'm going to run multinomial naive bays. So I'm just going to go back to my filter classifier and configure it and configure it to choose multinomial naive bays. That's naive bays multinomial and run that. It's very quick. And I don't get a very good classification accuracy, but I get, I get rather a good ROC area and not a bad accuracy on the min minority class, 52 over 57. So uh, that's uh, not too bad, a definite improvement in terms of ROC area and minority class accuracy on J48. Now I can actually mess around with some of the parameters of the string to word vector filter. There's a lot of parameters here. And uh, they are very useful. So one of the parameters is to output word counts. That is, by default, the filter outputs a 1 if the uh, document contains that word and a 0 otherwise. But we can output the number of times, number of appearances of that word in the document, which is suitable for multinomial naive bays. And I'm going to do a few other things at the same time. I can change all the tokens, all the words, into lower case. And I'm going to do that so that it doesn't matter whether a word is expressed in uppercase or lowercase, it's going to count as the same word. And also I'm going to use a stop list. Stop lists, stop words are those common words like and and the. And there's a standard stop list for English, so if I set this to true, then it's going to use it's going to disregard common words, words on the stop list in Weka. And let me run that again and see what I get. And here I get a slightly better accuracy, pretty good accuracy actually. Uh, I get a much better ROC area and I get phenomenal accuracy on the minority class. Just one error out of 57 here. So going back to my slide, with J48 I got, I got really good classification accuracy. Now I'm not quite at the same level with naive based multinomial. When I first did naive based multinomial, it wasn't too bad, but uh, then when I set the output word counts, well, it got slightly worse actually. I got a worse ROC area, which is a little bit surprising. Better accuracy on the minority class, 54 out of 57. Then when I set lower case tokens on the stop list as well, I got very good accuracy on the minority class and a very good ROC area of 0.978. So that's it. Multinomial Naive Bayes is a machine le learning method that's designed for use with text. It uh, takes into account word appearance rather than word non-appearance. It accounts for multiple repetitions of a word. And it treats common words differently from unusual ones by looking at the frequency at which they appear in the document collection. It's actually a lot faster in Weka than plain naive Bayes. For one thing, it ignores words that don't appear in the document, which when you think about it is most words don't appear in the document. And the internally, Weka uses a, what's called a sparse representation of the data. Multinomial naive Bayes takes advantage of that. And the uh, string to word vector filter has got many interesting options. Um, and uh, we looked at some of those. Uh, it actually outputs the results in sparse format which multinomial naive base takes advantage of. So there's some stuff on this method in the course text. And now you should go and do the activity associated with this lesson. And by the way, it's now time to do the uh, mid-course test. This is the end of class two, so you should sit the mid-course test and see how you get on with that as well as doing the activity. And I'll see you in class three. Bye for now.